Hi everyone. So now we're going to cover the language of anatomy and we're going to use the video so that you can see what we refer to when we talk about anatomical terms. It might be a little weird, but get used to it. Okay, so let's begin with anatomical position. Very important because everything that we talk about in class will always refer to anatomical position unless otherwise noted. If not, just assume anatomical position when, an when questions are asked. Okay, so begin. Standing up. So you are standing up, all right, and then you can't see my feet, but these are going to be parallel and they are going to be on the floor, okay? And so I'm not, you know, standing on my tippy toes, but they're going to be flat. Also, my head will be level and pointed forward. I'm not looking down, unfortunately, like I am in the video, but you want to look straight ahead. And then also you're going to have your palms facing forward, okay? And your thumbs are going to be pointing away from the body. Okay, so they're going to look like this. So let me see if I can back up a little bit. It helps and bring that down. So here we go. This is the anatomical position. All right, I'm not slouched over, not to the side or anything like that. Um, and again, anatomical position for everything we talk about in class. Okay, now let's go into sections and planes of the body. So a section, this is going to be like a cut or a slice through a structure, okay? And so this is going to be as a 3D uh, various that you're going to see. Now a plane is going to be some type of flat surface that's going to cut through the body or sometimes just through an organ. So if we want to say look at the brain, sometimes we might do like look at a horizontal plane so that we could see the different layers. So let's begin with some terms that will be very familiar and very important throughout the entire semester. So the first one, the coronal or the frontal plane. So this is going to divide the body into a front and back part. Okay, so on you, it would look like if somebody took an imaginary knife and cut through so that you could see your front portion and then also your back portion okay so it's going to be like at the crown of your head and it's going to again separate into a front and a back side okay transverse horizontal or sometimes you'll hear cross-sectional plane that I'll use and this is where you cut in a superior or an upper region also with an inferior or lower region okay so like when we talk about different muscles like especially um, uh, like of the leg muscle so this would be looking if you cut and so I wanted to see say this the area of like say my quadricep very important for like exercise studies um, and aging studies Okay, then we have mid sagittal or median plane. Okay, so mid sagittal, if you can imagine mid being right in the middle, and sagittal meaning that we'll have a left and a right side. Okay, and so this would be directly in the middle, so right where your nose is, so then you have your right side and then you have your left side. Now, when we have a sagittal plane or parasagittal, you might often hear it too, is that if it's anywhere off of the midline of the body. And so it could be even say one centimeter off, one millimeter, but that's just anywhere else, so we refer to that sagittal. However, both of which are going to have a left side and a right side of the body, okay? Lastly, we'll use this, um, we'll define it, but we don't really use this too often, but an oblique plane. And so this is going to be at an angle, okay? And so it can be geared towards the left, it could be geared towards the right, doesn't matter, just means that it's going to be at some type of angle. Now let's talk about different directions when we talk about anatomy. Okay, so let's talk about the first one at the top here. Let me see if I do my little fun tool right here. Anterior and posterior. So anterior means more towards the front of the body, posterior more towards the back, okay? And so we will refer to this when we're talking about say different organs within the body or muscles which are going to be more anterior, which are going to be more posterior. So for example, the esophagus is going to be more anterior compared to the spinal cord, which is more posterior to the body. All right, next one, let's look here. Superior and inferior. Superior more towards the top, so your head is more superior compared to inferior towards the bottom, towards your toes. So then your knees are going to be more inferior compared to your head. 
All right, next one, let's look at medial and lateral. So medial, more towards the midline. So your nose is probably one of your most medial uh, organs that we have. And lateral means towards the sides, okay? So your arms, these are going to be more lateral, say, compared to your ears. Next, what we have are proximal and distal. This is very important when we talk about muscles, especially with origin and insertion. And this has to do of some point of reference, okay? So usually we're looking at some type of um, attachment point. And so uh, the shoulders would be typically an attachment point. Also, the knees are going to be an attachment point. Okay, so proximal would be closer towards an attachment point. So for instance, if we talk about my hand, I can't see it. <laughs> okay, so your elbow is going to be more proximal, closer to your attachment point, than your fingers, okay? Distal now refer to being farther away from an attachment point, okay? So if we do the same example, okay? Now we have our fingers are going to be more distal than the elbow because now it's farther away from our attachment point of the shoulders. Next, regional anatomy. So there's two main terms that we should be very familiar with, and this will become very important when we talk about bones and when we talk about muscles. All right, the first one is axial. So axial is going to be referring to along the axis, the long axis of the body. So this includes the head, the trunk, and the neck, okay? And the appendicular then, region of the body are going to be the upper and lower limbs where these are going to be attaching to the axial portion of the body. Okay, so muscles of the hand and bones of the hand are going to be part of the appendicular skeleton or part of appendicular muscles versus the muscles and the bones of the face are going to be part of the axial skeleton and axial muscles. Body cavities are going to refer to areas of the body now that house different organs and systems, okay? And so this is for all those internal organs. Now, there's two main divisions that we have. So the first one is going to be the posterior, and then the second is the ventral. So posterior means this is now going to be on the back side. Ventral means towards the front, okay? So let's cover posterior aspect. Cranial cavity, so this is where we have the brain, cranial nerves, and then this is going to be now continuous then with the vertebral canal, and this is by the vertebrae and the spinal cord, okay, and spinal nerves will come off of that. So these are going to be considered to be part of the posterior on the back portion of the body, housing those special organs that we have for those cavities. Now, the ventral cavities, now again towards the front, what we have are the thoracic cavity and then also the abdominal pelvic cavity. The thoracic cavity is going to be more superior, and so this is where we'll have the organs of the lungs and the heart that are going to be housed here. And then the abdominal pelvic cavity is going to be separated from the thoracic cavity by the diaphragm, okay, so special muscle, um, and so it's going to separate those two regions. So the abdominal pelvic is actually going to be made of two different cavities, the abdominal cavity and then also the pelvic. Abdominal is going to be a little bit more superior, pelvic will be a little bit more inferior, okay? And so within the abdominal um, pelvic cavity, what we have are the organs for digestion, we have the organs for the urinary system as well as for the reproductive system. With the abdominal pelvic cavity being the largest of the cavities, um, there's also ways we classify the different regions based on um, wh what organs are in them, okay? So let's start out again. Let me ask you, what will separate the abdominal pelvic cavity from the thoracic? Diaphragm, exactly right. Okay, so let's talk about these nine different regions. Okay, so what we have here, let's start at the top or the superior portion. So if we start in the middle, we have the epigastric region. And so this is where we have the organs of the stomach, the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine, part of the pancreas, and then the adrenal glands, which sit on top of the kidneys. Okay, then if we go inferior or below that, then what we have is the umbilical region. And so this is also the navel region right around your belly button. And this is where we'll have part of the transverse colon and then also part of the small intestines. Then the most inferior portion 
below, lowest portion, is going to be the hypogastric portion. And so hypo means below. And this is uh, the organs that we find here are going to be small intestine, the urinary bladder, as well as the sigmoid or the S-shape um, portion of the large intestine. Okay, so let's go back up. All right, to then the hypochondriac region. So then what we have is a right hypochondriac and a left hypochondriac, which are going to be next to then the epigastric. Okay, so for both of these, what we'll have is part of the kidney, so their perspective, right kidney and left kidney. Also, if we go to the left side, what we have is part of the stomach and part of the spleen. Now, if we go to the right side, what we have are the liver and part of the gallbladder. Now, if we go a little bit lower, what we have are the left and right lumbar region. So next to the umbilical region, again, around the belly button. Okay, so if we go left and right side. What we have then, if we start on the left side, we have the descending colon, descending meaning going down, the lower portion of the left kidney, and then the lower portion of the small intestine. On the right side, the right lumbar side, what we have is part of the cecum, which is going to be the first part of the large intestine, and then also the lower portion of the right kidney, and then part of the small intestine. Then, most inferior to the left and right side, or sagittally now, um, and what direction if we're going that way? towards the side, good, it's going to be lateral. So now what we'll have are the right and, or I'm sorry, the left and the right iliac regions. And so this is going to be by that hypogastric region, okay, to the sides of those. And so these are going to be for muscles that are found within the um, iliac, so around the bone, which is going to be your hip bone. And then also the lower portions then of the large intestine and the small intestine.